Um, I did not wake up one day and become a successful guy in business. In 1981, I set my first business up and it failed. In 1983, I set my second, second business up and it failed. So I thought, well, if, if two didn't work, maybe, maybe two, another two more will work. So in 1985, I set two, two, two more businesses at the same time. They both failed. So I sort of woke up one day and I realized that whatever I'm doing isn't working. And that was a very profound thing to realize. And so I, I, I went through a process of letting go of everything I believed in, pretty much, and, and put it all back together again and acquiring knowledge and wisdom from people that I knew who spoke the truth. And how I could, I could spot the BS from the truth was I had lived a life of BS until that point in time. So I knew what BS was as opposed to what was truth. And I, I, then, I then set up my fifth business, and it was a very, very successful business. And it went on from there. And since that time, I've had mostly successes and the odd failure. But failure is a good thing. You, you may have heard that before. You fail your way to success, and I'm living proof of that. Just the, the, the mistake I was making at the beginning was I didn't know what I was talking about. And number two, I kept, or I was persistent as hell, but I was persistent, persistent in the wrong things. A lot of people say that persistence is really important. Well, it is important, but it only if you're doing the right things. If you persist doing the wrong things, you're going to go in the wrong direction real fast. Which is actually really good, because you get it over with. <laughs> <laughs> so don't worry about failing. A lot of you already failed at one or two more things in your life, and you probably will fail a lot more. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. So when you're going through it, it can be a bit painful. So after I had some successes, back in 1989, I had a financial planning business, and I had a financial seminar business. What, I had, what would happen was you'd come to my financial seminar and then as a graduate of that program you got a meeting with a financial planner. So it was a very well programmed stepwise progression through and it was very profitable. Except we had one problem. We couldn't get enough people into the seminar. We had a marketing issue. And you know, I would do things like I would buy a thousand dollar ad in the Vancouver Sun and get three phone calls and no enrollments. And that, you only do that for so long. And so I got to figure this thing out. So one day in the spring of 1989, I got a, a fax from a colleague, a 12-page fax from a colleague. It was really a 12-page sales letter about a marketing conference that was taking place in a, in a, at a hotel near L, L, LAX, California. And it was about 2,000 bucks for the airbus to go, which back in that time was a lot of money, plus airfare and hotel and all the other expenses. And I decided to go. I just felt this is the right thing for me. And of course, they, they had all these big names from marketing that I'd never heard of before, like Jay Abraham and Gary Halbert and and Robert Allen, all these guys were all there. And I, the only guy I heard of was Robert Allen. The other guys didn't mean anything to me. So I head off down there with, with a friend of mine. And uh, I was there about 10 minutes, knew I was in the right place. I just, this, this is where I needed to be. And one of the speakers who impressed me the most was a guy called Gary Halbert. He was a bit of a, a crude guy. He spent time in jail for mail fraud. <laughs> and uh, he was uh, a real character. And he, he, as soon as I heard him speak, I knew this is a guy I want to spend more time with. <laughs> What's that say about Alan? <laughs> I'm, I'm a really open-minded guy. I, I, I'm open to having a conversation with anybody or anything. I've always been that way. And I find that some of the most interesting, interesting characters I learn the most from. They had lots of interesting life experiences. So Gary's there talking about all those experiences of, with direct response marketing, which I'd never heard of before. And so he said, by the way, any of you who want to spend a half hour with me, tomorrow afternoon, starting at 1 o'clock, you can spend a half hour with me, and I'll help you out with your, any of your business marketing problems. So I was the first guy in the back of the room to sign up. Next day at 1 o'clock, I'm in his hotel room. And for the next half hour, he, he asked me a few three or four questions about my business, and he proceeds to tell me exactly what I needed to do when I got back home. And sure enough, when I got back home, I did exactly what he said, and it worked like a, a charm. In fact, one of the first ads I ran Instead of getting three phone calls, they got 53 phone calls, and people gave us their visas and MasterCards over the telephone, which I'd never experienced before in my life. But what happened back in LA was very interesting. After I got the first half hour session with Gary, I asked him a question. It's a question that changed my life. I said, Gary, would you mind if I sat in and observed the, your next five hostages you're going to do with the other business owners? And he paused and he said, no one's ever asked me that before. He paused again. He said, sure, why not? So I sat there like a fly on the wall for the next three hours while he went through the next five guys. And I saw connections and, and things happening that I, that I never experienced in the half hour I had with him. I realized the mar how marketing worked and how 
direct response marketing worked. And that was what, what caused me to begin a career in, in marketing that to this day has served me really well. He told me how to be a good copywriter. He told me how, well, all those other things. He just poured his heart out for me in, in that time frame. And I came back a changed man. And I, ever since then, I always, most of my ads have been very, very successful that I've written. And uh, same with sales letters and everything else I've done. And I wrote all the, that time with Gary Halbert. And one of the, I'll, I'll share with you one of the most profound things he told me. If you want to be a good copywriter, anybody in the room interested in being a good copywriter? It's a lost art. It's a lost art. But here's what you do. You find an ad or, a, or a, a sales letter that you like, that really moves you. Then you handwrite it out twice. You handwrite the whole letter that you, that you want to master, and you write it out by handwritten. You can't type it. You got to handwrite it. And that will ingrain the style of writing into your brain. And I've shared that with many people over the years. There's only one guy I know who ever did it, or two guys that I know who ever did it. One is a DJ, and the other is Dan Locke. And they're both good copywriters because they, they, they took Gary Howard's advice. Now, of the hundreds of people I shared that with, nobody else ever did it because it was too much work. It might take an hour of your time to do that, two hours of your time. The trick's to pick a short letter. <laughs> ten times your finances, ten times your business, ten times your marketing, ten times your life. Hit the subscribe button now.